Welcome to my homeschoolhub.com's Mentor Moms Roundtable Discussion. Today we're going to be talking about why anybody who wants to homeschool can do it successfully. You can work with any one of these Mentor Moms on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Just go to my homeschoolhub.com Mentor Moms to sign up. Hey, welcome to my Homeschool Hub's first roundtable discussion. And today we're going to be talking about why anybody who wants to homeschool can homeschool. And we have eight great mentor moms here today, and we're going to go through and introduce ourselves, and we are going to have a talk about why you can homeschool and some of the fears that go along with that and dis dismissing some of those myths, and we're going to help you understand how you can be a great homeschooler. So I'll start. My name is Colleen Prane. I am the owner and founder of my homeschool hub. I have three boys. I've been homeschooling for about eight and a half years. And they range in ages from 11 to 14. And with that, I'll hand it off to the next mom. My name is Hi, Michelle I'm Moore, and I have five kids, ages 21 to nine, two boys and three girls, and I've been homeschooling for over 15 years. I'm Barbara West, and I've been homeschooling for 32 years, and I have five children. They range in age from 17 to 37. I'm Tana Carr, and I have four children. I've been homeschooling since our oldest, who's 16, was born, but officially since for about 11 years. Um, they, my, our kids range from 12 to 16 right now. Hi, my name is Angela Shelley. I have four children, and they range in age from uh, four to 12, and we've been homeschooling since the beginning. I'm Kirsten Kearns, and I have five children. They range in age from nine to 24, and I've been homeschooling for about 18 years. Okay, I'm Sharon Michael, and um, yeah, I've been uh, homeschooling for about 26 years. Um, I have A's, um, ranges from about 31 to 17. Hello, I'm Kimberly Probst, and I have 12 kids that range from 6 to 26. Five have graduated and one's working on a PhD. And um, I've been homeschooling since the start. So I should have added it up, but I didn't. I'm going to later at how many cumulative years there are homeschooling. I, it's well over 100, I'm sure, with all of that. So there's a lot of knowledge here. So what I would like to talk about today is I want to hear y'all's thoughts on why anyone who wants to can successfully homeschool. And what I would like for you to do is consider these questions and we'll just get through as many as we can. Um, I'd like you to tell me, what would you say to somebody um, who asked this question? What do I have to do or what traits do I need to have to be able to homeschool my child? I think you just have to have a willingness to do it. You just have to have a heart for it. And whatever that is, whether you feel called to do it or you, you've you been thinking about it forever, I just think it's all about your heart and do it. What, would, what do you think about people who are just now considering it for the first time because of COVID and how schools have completely changed in their structure and their format. Do you think that that changes anything for anybody? How, how would that apply to people who are just thinking about it for the first time? So when I first started, um, I was not, I, I did not have a heart for homeschooling when I first started. I didn't want to homeschool. I thought homeschoolers were uh, bonnet wearing, prairie dust wearing, you know, uh, they churn their own butter kind of <laughs> women. And, uh, and I really, you know, we grew, we started having children in an area where um, the public schools were really not that great. And, uh, and we didn't have the money for private school. So we said, well, you know, what else could we do? So I did start looking into homeschooling and um, had some, friends that did it, had some family members that did it, and so I had some resources that I can pull from. But it's kind of similar to to the to the whole COVID thing right now where, you know, people are being forced to either distance learn, which is totally different from homeschooling, or they're they're um, doing some sort of hybrid where they're coming into class sometimes and not others. 
And that works for some students and it doesn't for others. Um, my oldest has dyslexia and ADHD and she was also, she also had like super high or has super high anxiety um, and does not do well in uh, group, uh, regular school, you know, setting. And so that has worked out really well for us. Um, I think that the flexibility of being able to do homeschooling, however, works best for your family, and that looks different for everybody, is a huge draw. And um, the flexibility was a huge draw for me. Um, I was able to kind of take our kids down rabbit trails when they were interested in something or um, go travel when we want to travel during school time um, and just take school with us. So that's been, th those have been really, really awesome things that we've been able to do. And I think that um, anybody can, can homeschool. I think there's no one who loves your children more than you do. And you remember the first time you held your child in your arms and how in love you were immediately and that you would do anything for this child. And I think that's a lot with homeschooling. The bonus is you kind of become a student of your child and therefore you discover what they like and how they learn and they all learn differently and they're all unique, but you have the flexibility to help them learn in the way they learn, but also help them learn how to learn differently sometimes, but without that pressure, without those things that you're pushing, gently pushing toward, not partially pushing. It's hard sometimes in the public school system to keep up. And this way you can teach them at their pace. No one's asked you when your child first learned how to walking, ex walk, except for a new time mom of like panicking, is my, mom, is my child capable? And it's the same thing that I had very late readers for some of the kids. And then I had one daughter who just watched how much I was working with a brother and I never got to teach her how to read. She picked it up by listening. And so each one's different, but really it's you love your child the most and you'll do anything for your child. So I think any parent is more than capable with that kind of love. That's nice I think what Michelle, Michelle said about the panic that some of the parents were feeling, they've never thought about homeschooling and now COVID is driving them there. And I think it's okay to tell them that they can feel afraid that they can feel scared, that they don't have all the answers. They never thought about this. That's okay. Join them where they are and say, it's all right, I've been there. And that healthy dose of fear is gonna help them. It's gonna help guide them, it's gonna keep them on the track. And I think it's a positive thing. It's all in how we frame that. So we can turn it around because I think they look at homeschoolers, the ones that have been homeschooling, like we have all the answers and we don't. We all go through that fear of, I don't know, did I miss this? Oh gosh, they're doing that. And I completely forgot about that, adding that in. And I think if we, we come alongside them and we tell them, we've been where you are and we're still there. It's not like we've totally checked every box and now we've got it completely under control. I think letting them know that COVID is something that's driving them to homeschooling and the fear that they have and maybe the panic that Michelle talked about, that that's normal and it's okay and just reassure them that where they are is fine. I think it helps people to see success stories too. Um, I noticed some of us have adult children who've made it through and graduated and they might be in college or at different stages. And, um, and so they can see that it's successful and that uh, your, your relationship with your child grows and um, it's really worth it. Um, I've also done evaluations for families of, of all kinds for the last eight years, and there really isn't much of a difference whether a parent is highly educated or not highly educated. Um, I've noticed that it, it matters more the time they spend with their child and um, that determines their success as opposed to their credentials. Yeah, Kimberly, I would have to agree with you. Um, I just, I think that the willingness to spend time and the commitment that we give to our kids is um, obviously that's a, a great factor and um, probably the one of the most important things we can do is that we're willing to give our time, our energy, our, you know, um, I was a quote that um, I just recently read that said something like children spell love, T-I-M-E, 
And um, so when at that point, you know, we feel like we're going to sacrifice for them, sacrifice our, our time or whatever we can do um, in, in whatever way that looks like. Again, like you said, Michelle, different, I think it was Michelle for like different families, different, different situations, then yeah, that, you know, whatever we can give in our, in our time is going to be important. It's going to make a big difference on, on what the outcome is. How does being a homeschool parent compare to being a school teacher? For anybody who has an education background, they're totally different. <laughs> you don't necessarily, it's not the same. Being at home is not just replicating school at home. Yes, you still do the educational subjects, of math, history, science, literature, whatever it is, but you have so many more opportunities at your disposal. You have more field trips, more spur at the moment. You can, when a child's sick, great. They can still go to school because you can still read out loud. You can still make it work for your family. I've known firefighter families who make it work around dad's schedule so that school isn't when he's home, but when he's gone, then there's school because it's the most flexible way of learning. And no, we don't all come to school in our pajamas, though my kids still try. Um, but there's little things that we get to do to teach them how to do things. But it's life skills at the same time as book skills. Yeah, I mean, I would say that learning is, it, life is learning. So it's not something that you get from a book and that's it, and that you're limited by information in a book. You're limited by your experiences. You're limited by, I mean, you're, I mean, you're, you learn by your experiences. You learn by your, um, the pitfalls. You learn by all your faults and your mistakes along the way. And, um, and, and I think that's just a, a, such a, a huge help when kids see that we are imperfect, you know, that we are making mistakes that we can admit, you know, okay, I did it wrong. I did it wrong this time. You know, let's let's go back and do it again because they're going to make mistakes. So when we're transparent with that, we can, you know, definitely see and, um, you know, just kind of show them that we are, we're just people just like they are. And um, yeah, so I, I guess that's, you know, just that we're learning all the time. And that, that's such the beauty of homeschooling is that I'm learning all the time. And that's why I love it just as much as my kids would love it. Um, or the other kids in a co-op that I might teach is you just are constantly learning. And uh, that definitely doesn't just stop with and a degree. We, so. we just keep learning. And if we show them the joy of learning, I think it becomes different, at least that's my hope, than it would be if they were in a traditional school where you're sort of being spoon fed what it is you need to know, where we can learn along with them. And I love learning. I, I've learned so much more since I've left college than I ever knew before. And I never would have had that opportunity had I not homeschooled. I would have just probably stopped learning. So it's my hope and prayer that my kids will go on to love learning what, whatever it is they're passionate about. So that is very different from being a school teacher. <laughs> we can customize um, we can customize our curric what curriculums we're using based on our kids and their learning styles to help meet them where they're at. But we can also allow their interests to guide where we go. You can go on those rabbit trails. And if they're really interested in something, you can camp on it longer. Um, whereas if you're in a traditional school setting, you're you know, you get what you get and everyone gets the kind of the same thing in the class. And so um, it can feed that love of learning that Kristen was talking about. So you can include your students in your life. Um, and just like some people were saying, um, I know one family that's building a house and their kids are included. Um, there was a student I knew who, who did their entire roof um, and that that is homeschooling. Um, their families, some students do what their parents' business is and help them with bookkeeping and things or whatever their business is. Um, for me, um, I run a homeschool program, so some of my kids help me write course descriptions and give tours and things like that. So everything we do is a family. Um, when I was working on my master's, which you don't need to homeschool, um, I would invite my kids and I'd say, okay, who wants to write an essay? 
And then whoever volunteered, I would show them the whole essay process. They would help me with it. I would turn it in, and then the grade would be our grade. As a result, well, I now have one who's gone on to doctorate studies. So, so you just include them in what you do, and, and then they'll love it, and they'll learn what they need to learn, and they'll love what you love. I guess when I read that question from Colleen, I thought about it in a different way. I was trying to think of a similarity between us as homeschool moms and dads and teachers. And one of the things was that we get to hand off our values. And if your children are in the public schools or charter schools, even private schools, the values of those teachers are handed to the children in the classroom. And so I thought as a homeschool mom, I can more easily hand those values off and I can help chart their course better because I'm right there with them. So I really felt like a similarity was that the values get handed off no matter who the teacher is, whether it's the mom or a teacher in front of a classroom. But I really think we have a better handle on getting those values that we hold dear, that we hold up, getting those passed on to our children when we homeschool. Yeah, one thing I'd like to add to that too is now it's not even just the teacher's values that are being handed down. It's whatever the government regulations are that they want to hand down. and. Um, we are all in the state of Colorado. A lot of the people watching this might not be in the state of Colorado, but we've seen it very aggressive here where very specific agendas on many topics are going to be taught in the schools and that's what's happening. And it's getting you know, harder to exempt your kids from that too. So homeschooling is great because you get to you know, decide what values are being taught. And in our house, we still talk about those things that are being taught in the public schools, but we introduce them on our terms when we're ready and the language that we use in the context that we want our kids to understand it as well. And there's a misnomer that, that would say that homeschoolers would do it in a closed-minded way um, where we're there was a Harvard uh, professor recently who said that we were going to be producing enemies of the state and uh, I'm not producing enemies of the state. My husband's family has served in the military all the way back to the Revolutionary War. And I tell you, we're patriots, we're not enemies of the state. It's, it's another thing that we need to consider what our kids are getting in what context. Yeah, just to say, yeah. piggyback to that, is just that I think as homeschoolers, we probably teach more about patriotism and and the other side and the other point of view than you would get in the public school system. Um, maybe not so much in the private school, but you know, the public school has one agenda and they just teach one side. You know, we teach all sides of science. Our kids don't come out just knowing about how, what we feel is how the world was created. We learn what an evolutionist believes. We learn about Darwin. We, we teach them to see all points of view. So I, I think it's funny that we get that reputation. <laughs> yeah, I think if you if you don't teach that, then you can't enter the great conversation, and you want to be able to discuss with people, know what they believe, how to interact with them. And so, of course, we would teach our children those things. And and it's not like we're we're sitting in a vacuum somewhere. Homeschoolers interact with other homeschoolers and other kids, and they get a lot of socialization. Um, as much as you want or as little as you want. And um, and so we do expose them to different cultures and different views, and I think that's healthy. Yeah, how many of you have actually had a hard time figuring out what to say no to because your kids are over-socialized? Like, that's such a huge thing. I think it's harder to know where to draw the line and keep homeschooling truly at home uh, because there are so many opportunities for homeschoolers across the board. I think that when people say, how will they get socialized, it really shows a lack of understanding uh, with the modern homeschool movement and how mainstream it actually has become, right? Yeah, when my and, son was born uh, about uh, four years ago, we actually ended up having to spend a year where I said, we are like stopping all of our extracurricular, all of our co-ops, all of our everything, because we weren't getting, we well, I had a newborn, and that's always a little bit harder um, to do with homeschooling, but we weren't getting our regular school done. <laughs> we were doing all the other things, um, so that we did have to have one year where I was like, no, we have to stop with the social things and, and do school. <laughs> 
So. Yeah, I've noticed that the questions have changed. Um, in 25 years, when I first started, I'd be at a McDonald's and my kids would be playing, oh, you homeschool, can you do that? Really? Um, and then they changed to, oh, well, that's great, but I could never do that. And now it's like, how do you do that? <laughs> Everything's changed. People wanted, even some of the same people that were skeptical before now want to know and they're calling us up and they're interested and that's why a group like this makes so much sense. So on that note, when people are like, I could never do it, I think a lot of the reasons why, what I've heard people say, people that I know, my friends, they say, I don't have the patience, I don't have the time, I don't have the, you know, we'll fight more than, than we'll be able to learn, it's going to be too much conflict. What have y'all experienced in your homes and how does that apply? Like, did you walk into it thinking, oh, I'm this very patient, wonderful, kind, nurturing woman and I'm going to sit around the table and we're going to be at the kitchen table and we're going to do read alouds all day long and we will love one another and we will never fight. Well, I mean, that's not my house, but you know, what, how did you guys experience that coming into homeschooling? What, what did that look like for you? And what would you say to somebody who said they, who says they don't have the patience or they can't homeschool? One of the biggest lessons that I learned when we first started homeschooling was um, if something's not working, change it do something different. That was a huge lesson for me because, and it kind of, it kind of correlates with the, the last question about how is homeschooling teaching different from school teaching is that, you know, a, a school teacher's hands are tied. They are, they are married to that curriculum and there is nothing that they can do to change that. Um, you know, I have a, my oldest again has ADHD and dyslexia and we have had to throw out whole curriculums where we were just like, this is not working, throw it out do something else or completely throw out curriculum altogether and just focus on what it is that they're having trouble with. And it really, it makes a huge difference. It's, it's, a, it's a great flexibility that homeschooling, it's an advantage that we have for sure. I just think it's and so I, important to have reasonable expectations um, that we sometimes, it's, it's always good to set a, set a high bar. In the end, sometimes we, we just have to be reasonable to set our expectations because an expectation is, what, is what's going to make or break something and, you know, or disappoint or, you know, um, or move you on. So, so I just think it's so important. And, you know, and again, just uh, in agreement with some of the others is that we're all a work in progress, you know, um, just being, again, willing to admit that, you know, I did that wrong, whatever, um, let's, let's start again. Um, let's, let's, let's back up. Let's, let's, let's go a different direction. I love that. Let's, let's forget this. And, and, and honestly, have I done that over all the years? No. I mean, gosh, I'm still learning, <laughs> still learning what works, you know, and as I hear you all talk, what a, what a refreshment of, you know, just seeing, um, all the things that you know that you guys have learned as well so it's just really awesome um, but I just think that sometimes we just set our ex expectations way above you know what we could even think and um, and that just brings disappointment for everyone well I think we so. also have to remember that even if they're in school they don't finish their books have any of you who had your kids in public school get back these books with you know a quarter of the year not finished and half the questions not filled in and um, teachers aren't finishing every bit of curriculum. And so, you know, we can keep that in mind too and not feel the pressure, but instead teach what our students really need. If they don't, haven't mastered multiplication, you can't move on to division, but in a school they will. And then they're totally confused, but you can really focus on what they need at that time and then they can move on and understand it and not forget um, it. I think yeah. that's important. I think having a plan every year is great, but I think you have to stay flexible with that plan. And and I think that is sometimes hard for people just starting homeschooling. I know it was for me. I thought I had to fill in every box and check every dot and make sure my kid knew this or, you know, I don't know, they weren't going to have a successful life if I didn't quite get everything done. And being able to change and flex is just really, it's a blessing to do. And even to what Yvonne was saying about how a little progress is progress, I would say even failure is progress because you've learned something, okay, I can't do that anymore or this doesn't work. So don't ever see a failure or stumbling block as, as something that means you shouldn't be doing it.
Yeah, and I was just going to add to that is this that, you know, sometimes we just we just get stuck in the comparison mode. And that is just such a scary place to be, um, even as moms or as, you know, comparing our kids, comparing our families, comparing whatever we did as far as with somebody else. I mean, it's always good to look at other families and, and take, get wisdom. But um, when you start comparing kids and start comparing what your school day looks as opposed to somebody else's school day, um, or even within your own children, that's a dangerous thing. And um, so I think those are some things you really need to be to, to be careful about is, is that this is, this is um, you know, how, how we do it as a family and this works for us. And yeah, I'll take all the wisdom I can get and things that work and don't work, but yeah, I think you just need to be careful on that comparison thing as well. And, uh, so. And on that, I think you also have to be careful to not focus on your weaknesses, but focus on your strengths. Because sure, there even when our kids were toddlers, how many of us had problems with patience? Because it didn't go the way we wanted it to go. That's normal humanity. Like you've all said, we grow over time, but because we're growing, we're teaching our children that it is okay to grow. That I've had kids like, oh no, I didn't get 100%. I'm like, yeah, you probably shouldn't because you're learning. Part of learning is making mistakes and I still make addition mistakes as an adult. This is all normal. Um, but focus on your gifts because there are some people, even your daughter with her ADD, she can do a lot of things and it's a blessing, but then that is also why we have the gift of one another and the gift of friends is because those friends come alongside and say, okay, so your strength is this and mine is this, how do we work this together? So we don't homeschool in isolation, it is still, while our family is our responsibility, our friendships help whether they're homeschoolers or not. I've had single friends just with what they've been able to int introduce my children to has been a blessing that was not my gift, but was their gift. So we have different strengths and teach into your strength and then teach your children how to learn into their strengths and understand their weaknesses, but understand that that's okay. It's, it's great to be humble in that and it's great to learn from that. And sometimes, like Sharon said before, we learn the most from our failure a lot of times. So it's okay to not be perfect and to keep growing. Well, I don't know about you guys, and I don't know if anybody, is anybody a veteran, uh, or not a veteran homeschooler, but um, did they, did they, were they homeschooled? Were you guys homeschooled? But, you know, so the majority of us, what else kind of models do we have to look at? You know, we had the public school model or maybe the private school model, and um, you just kind of, you know, until you kind of get tired of something or something doesn't work or you just, you know, you start thinking of, wow, I could, I can do this differently. You kind of just wrote right along with what, with what you know, right? Until you, until something kind of awakes in you to say, you know, I don't have to and do it this way or this, or, or the way I was taught. And that's, I'm so thankful for that. But I, it took me a while to get out of that. You know, like Kirsten was saying, you know, we have all that, that, that public school model, I think, that we, you know, get stuck in or we don't have to teach like the public school. So I don't know about you guys, but that's, uh, that was a, that was a hard thing to break from because I was just, that's just what I was used to doing. Yeah, I did have an advantage of being partially homeschooled. I was raised in Quebec where we went to school in French and my mother taught me English in the summers. So she did spelling and English with me. And um, I kind of schooled all year long, which I actually do with my kids now. And I use the same method she did, and um, it passes on. Um, but other ways, I was in school, and I saw those methods. And um, I remember a lot less of what I learned there than I did with my mom. So With COVID, I talked to a lot of families that have older kids, because I have a lot of older kids. And one of their things isn't so much patience. Do I have enough patience to do this? but do I have enough knowledge about subject matter? And they start to panic. And same thing with patients, you know, it's gonna develop as you homeschool, but same thing with the knowledge. You can learn right along with your kids. You don't have to know everything about calculus. You can sit down, 
refresh yourself on algebra one, two, and geometry, trig, and all that, and jump into calculus with them, but you learn right along with them, just like the patients. You're going to develop that as you're trying to develop that also in your children. So it's not something like, okay, I've achieved this, I've got it, I understand everything, I know all, now I can teach you everything. We need to, somebody talked about being humble and admitting your failures and your mistakes with your kids because that makes you teachable. It helps them to be teachable as well. So many resources out there now for those high school level classes exactly. and things like that, that if you really are not good at math, um, you know, there's different online options where they've got live classes that they can still interact with the teacher, but they can teach them maybe that one subject that you don't, you really don't want to have to teach or learn alongside of them again. So there's tons of opportunities and options out there as well. And I would probably say for families that have, you know, maybe specifically just older kids, high schoolers that are, they're having at home, I mean, those kids are also capable of learning on their own that parents should not sweat that they don't know calculus or want to refresh and learn calculus. Um, I wouldn't do it, and I didn't. <laughs> but uh, I think there are, to what, uh, is it Tana? Tana's saying um, that there's a lot of options out there for them, way more than there ever were 20 years ago. So don't be afraid. And when a parent thinks they don't have patience with their child, the teachers in school don't have patience either. They send the kids home. And if you think that you're having trouble with your kid at home, probably a teacher at school is having problems with that kid too. And so it's so much better to actually work on the character issues with them where you actually solve them instead of pushing them along from grade to grade where a teacher's like, well, you get that kid next year and the parents have no idea that they're causing problems. You, you can actually resolve these things and really work with your kids and, um, and enjoy them. And then if there are character issues, you can really address those and look in yourself and see if there are things you need to fix about yourself if you're not patient. or And so actually you start to grow more and kids see you improving and trying and, um, and because of that they respond and they're willing to change too. So it changes the whole relationship to be one which is more um, more friendly in character and less um, less confrontational than they were before. And it, I think that along those lines, I think that it really shores up your relationship with your kids when you have them at home and you're doing that. And you're and because honestly, when my kids are acting up, it's usually because I'm acting up first. And if I can get myself under control and check myself and apologize for shortness, quippiness, and patience, all those things. And I can try to model, you know, humility and apologizing when I need to apologize. And we know we're doing it together. I think that the, the bonds and the foundation are so much stronger to get through hard times when they come. And I'm hoping, I don't know because my oldest is only 14, but I'm hoping, I'm praying that it'll set us up for when, when they're adults that we can have that friendship, right? When it shifts from going from that parent and then to the coaching, you know, where you're going beside your kids as teens and as young adults to when they're adults and you can be friends. That's what I'm hoping for. I'll let you know in, you know, quite a few years how that works out, but <laughs> that's the goal. Some of you have adult kids. Are they friends with you? I know mine are. My married daughter calls me up and she doesn't avoid me. She wants to talk to me. So I'm sure some of you have that too. Yeah. And those are the things that probably that I enjoy most about homeschooling, even the confrontations, because it does produce fruit. You know, if we if we just always just avoid the situations and avoid the the um, things that bother us or the things that bother us and someone else, we're always just, you know, we're never going to grow. We're never going to, you know, produce that fruit that we need to 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 be different in other relationships. And so, yeah, I, I love the fact and, you know, we, we did have. Did a lot of have I did have a lot of headbutting going on with certain kids more than others, but you know at certain points in time and and gosh I look at that now and I'm just even thankful that um, that you know the differences of opinions and difference of the differences of personalities drove us to that that unity and to that one same thing which is family which is life which is um, just connecting and learning how to connect with other people so yeah it's huge it's a huge huge thing. I love hearing all of your wisdom and insight. It just nurtures my heart. I love listening to y'all talk. And I have one, this is a wild card. I didn't 
even think about this until just a few minutes ago, but I want to share something with you that somebody said, and I would like for you to respond to it. My friend of mine posted this on Twitter, sharing information about my homeschool hub, and this was this guy's response. He's looking forward to our kids working for his kids. And I just think this is so absolutely ridiculous because it's been so well established on how well homeschoolers perform, whether it's the ACT scores or the SAT scores or the college GPA. So I'd like for y'all to respond to this. So um, definitely, I not only my kids that my oldest is now doing a, a PhD and another two are starting masters. Um, but also uh, I've seen other kids and, and I've also worked as an administrator with universities and seen their response. They are so happy to have homeschool. They will give your kids scholarships, um, especially if you have some kind of umbrella backing. Um, we can talk about that another day, but it, they want your kids. So they, they see that those kids finish their degrees. They know what they want to do. They, um, they have a plan. They're interested. They're not just frittering around in college. And if they choose not to go to college, they're doing apprenticeships and they're doing, they have plans for their lives. And so I haven't seen a lazy homeschooler that finished with, you know, working for someone they didn't want to work for. So that's, that's just what I've seen over eight years with 100 families. And I think that's a lot to be able to say. It does work, and it does work out. And so we'll just show that guy <laughs> what our kids can do. <laughs> I know that, um, so I have, I have two, I guess, two examples. One is um, a personal example. When I very first started in a homeschooling co-op, I, so I'm, my degrees are in biology and chemistry, so I'm kind of a nerd. Um, and all the other moms were like, oh, please teach science. So I ended up teaching most of the science classes. And I, one of the classes that I taught was a, just a general science class. And it was a fifth grade, fifth, fifth and sixth grade together, general science class. And I remember I didn't, I had really not had a whole lot of experience with, um, with homeschooling. And so I was really trying to do that. A lot of first time homeschooling moms tend to try to replicate school at home. And so I was trying to, you know, do the chapter by chapter, do the notes on the board, have them, you know, putting those notes on the, their paper and all of that. And there were, there were two, two little boys and they were twins. And they couldn't even write, copy a sentence that I had on the board onto their paper. And I was like, oh my gosh, these kids, they're, they're, what are they gonna do when they get older? They're just gonna have to like, you know, they're gonna have to do something hard. They aren't gonna be able to read and write. What are they gonna do? You know, I didn't, I didn't know what was happening. So, um, but I will say that they are now in college. They are now on the Dean's list. They are in, um, uh, some really, really high level classes and they're doing wonderfully. Um, so that is that is a personal experience that I've had. And then another uh, experience is that I, I know some CEO level guys that are in IT, they own their own businesses and things. And they, um, they have said to me, you know, I would rather have a, a, a kid that has come from a homeschooling background because they, they think differently, their brains work differently, and they think outside the box way better than someone that has come from a uh, classical education home, uh, from, from not, not classical education, but classical uh, training from, from regular school that's like that kind of just in classroom learning how they're supposed to learn. They're, they're waiting for the person to tell them what to do next because that's, that's what you do in regular school. And their brains just work differently. Homeschoolers um, learn differently and they, they experience things differently. I would just tell a quick story. I, I have similar personal experiences to what these gals have just mentioned, but um, I, I heard a speaker who some of you may be familiar with, Andrew Poudois with uh, the Institute for Excellence in Writing. And he talked about a book written by a former teacher in the New York public school system. It's called uh, The Secret History of the Underground School System or something to that effect. Uh, do you go to that effect, uh, you can Google it. 
But the, the gentleman talks about how we really haven't been doing traditional schooling for more than about 200 years. Prior to that, going back to our founding fathers, kids in their elementary and secondary educations learned at home. Or if you were fortunate to have money, you might have a tutor. And it wasn't until you got to be about 16 that you went on to an apprenticeship or to become a lawyer in a college. Not that we didn't have a traditional school setting, but what were we doing wrong all those years before? And what you come to find out is the reason why we have this is because of the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution sparked a whole need for a new kind of worker, a factory worker, someone who would obey the rules, punch a clock, and you know, move when the bell rang. So your billionaires came up with the idea to let's mandate school, let's get the government to pay for our training program, let's churn out these kids that can come work for us in the factory and do what we need them to do when we need to do them. And it worked because you do get cookie cutters out of the school system and homeschooling does not produce cookie cutters. And if you want to challenge that, then I would say, look at people like George Washington and Benjamin Franklin and, um, you know, uh, the Adams, the founding fathers. And you can go back to something more recent. You can look at Thomas Edison. Um, here's a guy who he, we wouldn't have half of what we had today, but he couldn't sit in a traditional school. So I think it's funny how naive people are. And, and what has created our world are the people that generally think outside the box. And, and that's what homeschooling really is based on. I think my, my daughter who's doing her PhD, when she was doing her master's, she found there were students that had been taught literature in school that were in her classes. And they read, they read books and then they would see it all the same way. It was very odd. It was like they all had one view, one perspective. And then she was like, well, how, what about this perspective? And what about that perspective? But it was like they'd been taught how to think about the book. Um, as she went on, and now in her PhD program, that's no longer true. You, have, you, you can't succeed in a PhD program without having some original thoughts. So those people are sort of weeded out. But, um, but it's, it's just so different than you're taught in homeschool how to do that all along, whereas these other people have such a hard time if it's not, tell me what's on the test, tell me what I need to know, instead of let's hear your thoughts about this, what interact with this book, I want to hear your perspective on it, what, what themes do you find? They don't even think that way. So it's a nice surprise for people that might be going into homeschooling just because it's a, an op, you know, it's an emergency time and a, an option right now, but they'll find a lot of those um, results are come with the territory and might be very Sorry. pleased by that. I just find it very interesting in the times that we're in and the things that we're seeing in our nation that um, how how many um, non-thinkers, I guess, that we, we see and that are just willing to follow the crowd and are willing to be, you know, just led over the ledge. And, and I, I, I think that, you know, as homeschooling families, as uh, it, I, I just appreciate the fact that yeah we do we do teach our kids to think and to think for ourselves and to and to research and to um, you know uh, think differently or think in a way that is um, beyond the scope of what everybody else may see. So yeah, and I I guess I can just see that some of those things that are happening today and you think well where does that where does that come from <laughs> and it it comes basically from the public school system. Um, and yeah, not to say that there aren't good things about it, but you know, but that's, I think that's just the kind of mode where it just all kind of came out and all flushed out in that, in that, in that, uh, in that sense, so. It's always hard though when you deal in generalities because then you would be saying every public school student or every private school student is going to be a business owner. And that's not true either. So. We have to be really careful about those generalities. And yeah, there may be times that my student, my child will be working for someone else. But what if that's their better gift as a team player? They're a better supportive player. 
you don't have quarterbacks on it's not a football team of quarterbacks there's also a difference with homeschoolers is they understand the times to follow but they understand the times to lead at least that's what we're trying to teach them the times to think for themselves and the times when they actually sometimes just have to close their mouth and not speak because that's the better thing to do but the hope is is that we're passing on and sending out into the world young people who care about other people who care about the best not just for themselves but for those around them hopefully we're sending out youth with integrity that you like kimberly you said they want homeschoolers because homeschoolers know certain things in dedication and my son i remember my oldest when he was taking physics and the math portion was just he hadn't had it yet and so instead of coming to me he went on his own and learned how to learn that and if we can teach our kids how to learn then we're giving them the greatest gift but again those generalities we always run into danger with that and then we can either puff ourselves up with pride that we're always going to be the best no i'm going to fail plenty of times and so will my kids but have they learned how to admit those have they learned how to apply themselves even when it's hard have they learned how to be a team player those are the kind of things that as a homeschooler we get the privilege to decide what character traits we're pouring into them as well and so Sometimes it's just a wait and see. Yeah, he may be working for you for a while, but he might be your best worker. We don't know. Awesome points. I love it. All right. Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate you sharing your hearts and your wisdom, and I look forward to the next conversation. Have a great okay. weekend. You too. Thanks, Colleen. You can work one-on-one -on -one with any one of these mentor moms. Go to myhomeschoolhub.com and go to Mentor Moms where you can sign up to partner with them one-on-one -on -one and get their wisdom directly into your life to help you be a better homeschooler. We'll see you next time. And remember, we exist to equip, empower, encourage, and connect you.